What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 221002 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you are going to learn about social engineering, DDoS, DOS, zero day attacks, man in the middle attacks, brute force, dictionary attacks, rainbow tables, spoofing, non compliant systems, and zombie attacks. Let's talk about social engineering. So in the context of information security, social engineering is the psychological manipulation of people into performing actions or divulging confidential information. This differs from social engineering within the social sciences, which does not concern the divulging of confidential information and six common social engineering techniques that you need to know to pass the CompTIA A plus 221,002 exam are you need to know fishing, spear fishing, impersonation, shoulder surfing, tailgating, and dumpster diving. Let's talk about phishing. So phishing is the fraudulent attempt to obtain sensitive information or data such as usernames, passwords, and credit card details or other sensitive details by impersonating oneself as a trustworthy entity in a digital communication. Phishing often directs users to interpersonal information at a fake website, which matches the look and feel of a legitimate website. And next we have spear phishing. So phishing attempts directed at specific individuals or companies are known as spear phishing. In contrast to bulk phishing, spear phishing attackers often gather and use personal information about their target to increase their probability of success of the attack. Next, we have impersonation. So a form of fraud in which attackers pose as a known or trusted person to dupe an employee into transferring money to a fraudulent account or the sharing of sensitive information such as intellectual property, financial data or payroll information or revealing login credentials that attackers can use to hack into a company's computer network. That is impersonation. Impersonation can happen on the phone through email or in person and common sense and strict policies on how to communicate sensitive information can help prevent impersonation attacks. Next, we have shoulder surfing. So this is a type of social engineering technique used to obtain information such as personal identification numbers, passwords, and other confidential data by looking over the victim's shoulder, either from the keystrokes on a device or from sensitive information being spoken and heard. And that is also known as eavesdropping. Then we also have tailgating, and this is also referred to as piggybacking. And this is a physical security breach in which an unauthorized person follows an authorized individual into a secure area. This is usually done without the authorized person's consent. And sometimes the authorized person is tricked into believing the unauthorized person is authorized. Now, man traps, they are designed to prevent tailgating. And then we have dumpster diving. So this is a technique used to retrieve information that could be used to carry out an attack on a computer network. Dumpster diving is not limited to searching through the trash for obvious treasures like access codes or passwords written down on sticky notes, seemingly innocent information like a phone list, calendar or organizational chart can be used to assist an attacker using social engineering techniques to gain access to the network. To limit the prospects of dumpster diving, you should use paper shredders or use the services of a shredding company to keep the available data limited. Let's talk about DDoS or a distributed denial of service. And this is a malicious attempt to disrupt the normal traffic of a targeted server, service, or network by overwhelming the target or its surrounding infrastructure with a flood of internet traffic. DDoS attacks achieve effectiveness by utilizing multiple compromised computer systems as sources of attack traffic. The traffic is so overwhelming that the site is unreachable by normal traffic traffic and is effectively shut down. Exploited machines can include computers and other trusted network resources such as IoT devices. 
Let's talk about a DOS or a denial of service. And this is a cyber attack which a malicious actor aims to render a computer or other device unavailable to its intended users by interrupting the device's normal functioning. DOS attacks typically function by overwhelming or flooding a targeted machine with requests until normal traffic is unable to be processed, resulting in a denial of service to additional users. A DOS attack is characterized by using a single computer to launch the attack. Next, we have a zero day attack. So a zero day vulnerability is a computer software vulnerability that is unknown to those who should be interested in mitigating the vulnerability, including the vendor of the target software. Until the vulnerability is mitigated, hackers can exploit it to adversely affect computer programs, data, additional computers, or a network. Next, we have a man in the middle attack. So in cryptography and computer security, a man in the middle attack is a cyber attack where the attacker secretly relays and possibly alters captured communications between two parties who believe that they are directly communicating with each other. We got brute force. So in cryptography, a brute force attack consists of an attacker submitting many passwords or passphrases with the hope of eventually guessing a combination correctly. The attacker systematically checks all possible passwords and passphrases until the correct one is found. System and network administrators setting up password rules that require a system to lock after a specified number of incorrect passwords or input is one way to prevent a brute force attack and longer passwords can aid in the fight against brute force attacks as well. Next, we have a dictionary attack. So in computer security, a dictionary attack is a form of a brute force attack technique for defeating a cipher or authentication mechanism by trying to determine its decryption key or passphrase by trying thousands or millions of likely possibilities, such as words in a dictionary or previously used passwords, often from lists obtained from past security breaches. Dictionary attacks can be prevented by locking systems after a specified number of incorrect passwords are offered and by requiring sophisticated passwords that do not include identifiable information such as birthdays, family names, etc. Next, we have a rainbow table. So a rainbow table is a hash function used in cryptography for storing important data, such as passwords in a database. A rainbow table attack, which is similar to a brute force attack, except it is more mathematically sophisticated and it takes less time. This is a type of hacking wherein the perpetrator tries to use a rainbow hash table to crack the password stored in the database. Then we have this thing called spoofing. So spoofing is a situation in which a person or program successfully identifies as a trustworthy source by falsifying data to gain an illegitimate advantage. Phishing, spear phishing, and rogue antivirus programs are three examples of spoofing. Then we have non-compliant systems. So non-compliant systems are computer systems on a network that do not have the most up-to-date security patches installed and are therefore very vulnerable to attacks. So an example would be a user attempting to use their personal laptop to log into their company's network without first having their personal laptop updated with the most up-to-date security patches to comply with the company's network standards. And then we have what is called a zombie. So in computing, a zombie is a computer connected to the internet that has been compromised by a hacker, computer virus, computer worm, or a Trojan horse program that can be used to perform malicious tasks of one sort or another under remote direction. Botnets of zombie computers are often used to spread email spam and launch DOS attacks. Most owners of zombie computers are unaware that their system is being used in this manner because the owner tends to be unaware these computers are metaphorically compared to fictional zombies. And now let's do some of this wonderful check on learning, shall we? So the first question is, an unauthorized practice of obtaining confidential information by manipulating people into disclosing sensitive data is referred to as what? Is it shoulder surfing? Is it privilege escalation? Social engineering, 
are penetration testing. So unauthorized actions to obtain confidential info is known as what? This is called social engineering. Next question. A social engineering technique whereby attackers under the disguise of a legitimate request attempt to gain access to confidential information they shouldn't have access to is commonly referred to as what is it? Is it phishing? Is it privilege escalation? Is it backdoor access or is it shoulder surfing? So a social engineering technique whereby attackers under disguise of a legit request attempt to gain access to confidential info they shouldn't have. This is called phishing. And the final question is, which social engineering attack relies on identity theft? Is it tailgating, dumpster diving, impersonation or watering hole attack? So which one of these relies on identity theft? The correct answer is uh, impersonation. All right. So in summary, we have talked about social engineering, DDoS and DOS attacks, zero days, man in the middle, brute force, dictionary attacks, rainbow table attacks, spoofing, non-compliant systems, and zombie attacks. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also, go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A-plus 221002 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.